not just milk. It's silky smooth steam milk, perfect for pouring latte art. And Chris here is gonna show you how to get it just right. Today, I'm gonna to be doing the talking. Chris is gonna be showing you how to get beautifully silky steam milk. Now, in our last video, Paul went through the six most common mistakes that people make when they're trying to pour latte art. And what we found is that the one that trips up new baristas the most is getting the texture of the milk right. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. We're gonna to give you a step-by-step -step guide and point out some of the things you need to know to get really silky milk texture. Now before we get into the process, let's take a look at our ingredient, milk. Now starting out, it's best to use full cream milk for best results. It's a lot more stable to work with, you know, and it tastes good too. Of course, you can use light or non-fat milk. It's just less forgiving. If you inject a little bit too much air, you're gonna end up with a mountain of foam at the end. So what about milk alternatives like almond, soy, or oat milk? Yes, you can get great results, but it's worth noting that it really depends on the brand. Some brands just aren't designed to work with coffee. They either produce big bubbles, they don't produce any foam at all, or they just completely curdle when you add them to coffee. Don't take it personally, it's probably not you. Just pick a different brand and try again. Now we're working on a comparison of which milk alternatives work best for coffee, so stay tuned for that one. Next is the milk jug. Now for best results, you'll want to pick a milk jug that's around two to three times the size of the cup or the cups that you're pouring into. So for a classic 160ml flat white or cappuccino, you'll want to pick a 400ml jug. While for an 8 ounce takeaway cup, a 600ml jug is going to be a better fit. Now the size is important because we need enough room for the milk to expand. On the other hand, if the milk is sitting too low in the jug, you won't be able to get a good whirlpool which is essential to get a great texture. It also helps to pick a milk jug with a nice defined spout. This will really help if you want to pour a nice tight pattern on your coffee. Okay, so let's get down to business. We'll go through each step in detail and then we'll run through the whole process again at the end. So first up, you want to clear the steam wand with a quick blast of steam. Next, we want to submerge the tip of the steaming wand into the milk. Position the steaming wand off to one side of the jug on a slight angle. This is going to help create a whirlpool. I find it helps to rest the wand in the spout of the jug just like this. Next we're going to crank the steaming wand on full. It's a classic trainee mistake to turn the steaming wand on just a little bit and then it sounds like a plane landing. Not fun. Now once the milk is spinning around, we want to lower the jug down a little bit to start injecting the air into the milk. You'll know you've hit the right spot when you hear a steady kissing sound. Next, when the milk has expanded around 20%, we want to raise the jug just a little to stop the kissing sound and let that milk continue to whirlpool. Now when the bottom of the jug is too hot to touch, we want to turn off the steam. If you like a more measured approach to temperature, then you can use a thermometer like this. Or my pick is to use a temperature sticker that changes colour when the milk hits 65 degrees. Of course, you can heat it a little more or less, but it tastes and it works best at around 65 degrees Celsius. Now before you get too excited about your creamy, creamy milk, it's time to wipe and purge that steamer every time, no excuses. Now we're going to give the jug a tap on the bench and a little swirl just to make that milk even creamier. Okay, now we're all ready to pour. Let's just recap that whole process in real time. First, we're going to purge the steamer. Then we're going to position the steaming wand so that it creates a whirlpool within the jug. We're going to crank the steam on full. We're going to lower the jug until we hear a steady kissing sound. When the milk's expanded by around 20%, we're gonna raise the jug a little and continue to spin that milk. When the jug is too hot to touch, we're gonna to stop the steamer. We're gonna wipe and spray the steamer to clean it off. And then we're gonna tap and spin that jug on the bench. So that's the whole process. It's tricky to bring it all together at first, but after you've done it a few times, all those movements become really natural and fluid. So just keep practicing. So here's a tip for practicing without wasting heaps of milk. 
pour some water into your jug and then add a couple of drops of washing up detergent. Now start to steam that mixture on the steaming wand and you'll notice that it creates a foam just like regular milk. You can even use this mix for practicing latte art if you've got some old coffee lying around. Just don't drink it. Okay, that's all we've got for today. Why don't you hit the like button if this video has helped you out at all. If you've got any questions, pop them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. But until next time, see ya. See ya.